Sometimes, not every enemy has to be evil. Hello everyone, welcome to Encounter Academy presented by Game On. This is a series where we help build interesting and unique encounters that help you tell a story. So grab your notebooks and get ready to take notes because class is in session. So today we're going to be building a space encounter for one of my favorite games, the Traveler RPG. I'm going to specifically be referencing Mongoose second edition, but you can plug and play this into any edition of Traveler. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to find our Traveler characters at St. Denis, which is part of the island cluster in the rift span about 10 parsecs spinward from the Third Imperium's reach. You don't have to necessarily take place this at St. Denis. You can pick this up and put this in any of the parts of the galaxy you are playing in, but I figure that this is a really good demonstration of what I am trying to do. So we're at St. Denis with our Far Trader. The Far Trader has a hard point, which has a sandcaster, as well as a beam turret on it, just for some defense. Now, the players have found a very lucrative business uh, shipping things back from Mondiage to Sandstair because these are two up-and-coming planets. They do have Class A starports. They are becoming more and more popular and becoming more and more rich. Their GDP is becoming much higher than what they were just a couple decades ago. So the players have found themselves jumping back and forth, making a lot of money doing this, hence why they're able to afford their beam turret and their sandcaster on their far trader. St. Dennis just happens to be the halfway point because they are jump two capable. So they'll jump to St. Dennis. It does have a class D starport, but why pay for unrefined fuel when you can just scoop from the gas giant that's in the system about one astronomical unit away from St. Dennis proper, but St. Dennis only has a class D starport. So again, why pay for unrefined fuel when you can just get it for free? So the players are going to find themselves in a normal situation. They jump in, their sensors pick up that there's one system defense boat around St. Dennis, and at the gas giant, there seems to be another craft. It seems to be a scout class craft. That is not at all uncommon. People jump back and forth and use St. Dennis as a halfway point all the time for jump two and jump three ships. So that's not anything terribly crazy for them. The pilot is doing great. She goes down into the deep layer and starts to scoop. You see the sensors as normal were scrambled when they went down into scoop. So it's hard to maintain where everything is on the outside of the planet when they're deep inside trying to pick up the gas. And they had no idea where the scout ship was and when they come out of it, they finally see that that ship has them pretty much locked on and two beam lasers go across the bow and across the stern, missing just by 10, 20 meters. Now, before we get into this, let's talk a little bit about this ship. Who is this ship and why are they shooting at the crew? Unfortunately, this ship is not in the greatest repair for the people who are flying it. And the people who are flying it are Scions. These people are from Sandstair and they are doing their very best to get the hell out of Dodge. They started with 112 people, but Sandstair had a persecution and a witch hunt for anybody who demonstrated any kind of psionic ability. Now these people who were born with this didn't try to be mean or bad with it. They were just born this way and they can't help that they have psionic abilities. They don't use it in a way to hurt anybody. But of course, Sandstair has a high law against anybody who demonstrates psionics. They will kill you on sight. They will do whatever they have to. So these people are trying to flee from Sandstair. As a matter of fact, 80 of them are on St. Dennis now because they are trying their very darndest to get ships, steal ships or steal their cargo so that they can pay for safe passage to a mondiage, 
where they can then jump four, get on a jump four ship, or maybe even a jump three ship to new home, which is where they hope to get a literal new home. And hopefully it's far enough away from Sandstair where they can just fit into the new growing population because new home is also a new growing planet. These scions don't want to kill the players. They have already seen 32 of their friends, family, fellow innocent people die. So they have absolutely no desire to kill the players. As a matter of fact, they really don't have any desire to, hurt, to like hurt their ship if they don't have to, especially because they need the money and they don't want to destroy the cargo or the ship. So that is their background. So let's see what happens in this combat. So the players are going to come up and they're going to see that they have two beam lasers shot across the front and the back of their ship. So what's going to happen is the Scion ship, the scout ship, is going to open up comms and try to hail the players. Now the players may or may not answer the call, but if they do, the Scions are going to ask for their cargo and say that they have locks on them and that they will disable them and steal their cargo if they have to. Now a science psychology, a caruse, or a diplomat role here would be really nice to hear that the, the Scion captain doesn't feel very sure of themselves. So whether it's a man or a woman, they, are, they don't feel very sure about themselves. You can detect that in their voice. Now, the players can't really run. I mean, they can. They have a thrust to ship, but they can't jump because they're in the jump shadow of the gas giant. The jump shadow of the gas giant is roughly 13.9 com uh, million kilometers. So they're going to have to burn for about an hour or two at thrust two just to get away. And they think that probably the pursuers will follow them. Now they can shoot back if they want, but their sensors will tell them that this ship is at about 75% capacity. So the players have a couple different options here. The players can just shoot back and destroy it. <laughs> and if they do, um, that just kind of is what it is. If they try to run, the Scions will follow for about 20 minutes and then kind of give up the lost cause. They will take shots at the players, but they will intentionally miss. A naval tactics roll by one of the players will figure this out that they are shooting. And if they can, and, and attention, intentionally missing. So if the players who make the naval tactics roll and the psychology insight type roll kind of put two and two together, they can probably figure out that these, these uh, scions don't want to actually hurt the players at all. The players can run, like I said, and the signs will break off about 20 minutes after on purposely missing. They don't really want to destroy or hurt anything if they don't have to. They're just hoping that they can intimidate themselves into getting free stuff. Or the players can open up a parlay and through a series of negotiations, roles such as diplomat, carouse, even the psychology role again, the Scions will eventually tell them their plea. Yes, what they are doing is illegal, but maybe the players will feel sorry or a sense of compulsion to help them. And in that case, they can help secure passage for them, or they can even just do it themselves if they have enough room for 80 Scions who are hanging out on St. Dennis, plus the three that are in the ship. It's up to the players here, but what I really like about this is that if the players choose to not kill the ship, if they choose not to shoot the enemy and blow them up, they can learn some lore about the area that they're in. And maybe they've even heard that Sandstair doesn't like Scions, or maybe they haven't and this is the first time. So we here in Encounter Academy try our very darndest to build an encounter that helps build a story and help expand the lore of the world around the players. This was not designed to challenge the players or their ship because they could have easily beaten the ship. But it was designed to challenge the players to think differently. Maybe try to parlay with their enemy, show mercy, or at least just run. Besides just blowing things up willy-nilly. That's what I like about Traveler because a lot of the players in Traveler tend to show 
decisions to not immediately just kill things, at least the, the, all the Traveler games I've been in. And that's really why I want to do Encounter Academy some more with other RPGs. So stay tuned. I thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if you liked this encounter, how you would change it, what you would do differently, what you would keep, where else you would do this. Thank you guys very much for watching Encounter Academy presented by Game On. My name is Justin and class is dismissed. <laughs>